Um, I had a very interesting childhood. Um, one that I thought was normal until a certain age. We all know and love Captain Jack Sparrow from the Pirates of the Caribbean. After all, that's the role that had us grow up with Johnny Depp and learn to love him. But lately, he's been known for his tragic life more than his diverse filmography. The recent developments in his trial against Amber Heard have definitely sparked interest in Johnny's life, and apparently, it's never been that great. It always has to start somewhere, right? And not surprisingly for most people, childhood is where it starts going downhill. It all started when he was born into a family as the fourth child of his parents, Betty and John. His father was an engineer and his mother a waitress. His mother was never one to settle down though. Because of her restlessness, they were always moving from state to state, never being able to call one place home for too long. My mom, her feet were on fire and she had to move, so we moved constantly, Depp revealed. So you were always the new kid, and that wasn't ever particularly pleasant. When Johnny was only seven, they moved to Florida, where they lived in a motel for a whole year before he found a job. But living in a motel wasn't the worst part. His mother was unstable in many ways, and that included constant abuse from her. And nobody in the house was safe from Betty, not Johnny, not his siblings, and not even her own husband. Physical violence, physical abuse, that was a constant. We were all somewhat shell-shocked. She'd walk past, you'd shield yourself because you didn't know what would happen, Depp said. And though there was physical abuse, certainly, which could be in the form of an ashtray being flung at you, hitting you in the head, or you'd get beat with a high heel shoe or a telephone or whatever's handy. And it wasn't just that. According to Johnny, that would have been a lot easier to handle if psychological abuse didn't come together with it. Betty would insult them with hurtful comments and would never hold back. She even made fun of Johnny's lazy eye defect by calling him one eye, or even worse names, just to humiliate him. On the other hand, his father was the opposite of Betty. He was a kind man who faced his wife's violence and not once lost control or attacked her. The most he ever did was punch a wall. This left young Johnny always wondering how he did this how he was so calm and collected, and never took it out on her or left her. Well, it seems that his priority was always maintaining the relationship with his kids. He was a good man, is a good man, Johnny said. But apparently even his dad had his limits, and he reached them when Johnny turned 15. Johnny's father finally cracked down and couldn't stand it anymore, so he walked out on the family on a morning as he went back off to work. Obviously, they all thought he was at work and no one suspected anything until Betty came home. She saw the closet had been emptied and let the children know that their daddy was gone. Depp had gone to his father's work immediately, upset and angry at him. I'm done. I can't do it anymore. I can't live it anymore, his father said to him. You're the man now. So instead of having fun like the other kids at his age, at 15, Johnny became the man of the house and took all of his father's responsibility. That's a little too tough for a kid that young. After his father left, little Johnny suffered from depression. What made it worse was going to the living room one night to see his mother crawling with drool on her mouth. She had tried over with a load of pills. That must have been traumatizing for the kids. She was taken to the hospital and came back home after a while, but it was never the same again. Betty wasn't the same woman who couldn't stay in one place for too long anymore. Now she really never left the couch. It's no surprise that Johnny's teenage years were just as troubled, but this time it was him who was acting out. He began experimenting with everything, especially drugs. He had started his drug-taking journey when he was 11, when he took his mother's meds to numb his own pain. Mom asked me to give her psychotropic drugs. I tried one pill furtively and realized that this is the only way to soothe the pain, he said. It's a pretty young age to do that. I can't say that I'm proud of admitting to that, but I have to say that I knew not what else to do. It was an interview for People magazine in 1994 when he actually revealed to the public about his teenage years. Apparently, he started smoking when he was 12, lost his virginity by the age of 13, and did every drug possible before 14. And when he was 16, he dropped out of school. Johnny regretted it two weeks later and wanted to give it a try, but he was disappointed when he went to the dean's office and was told, Johnny, we don't want you to come back. So he was left with no choice but to really try becoming a musician along with his band, The Kids. The band was giving some opening shows here and there, but Depp was still struggling. He was broke and living in his friend's cars for months. Of course, he had to make a living, so he worked many jobs, such as at a construction site, worked as a courier, and then he started selling ball pens. All his free time went to his music. And in a span of just four years, Johnny switched to 14 different musical bands. However, it was when he was 20, 
and married to Lori Allison that he realized music wasn't really his thing. He knew he would never succeed as a musician and his wife agreed. She introduced him to Nicolas Cage and that was the start of his career as an actor. Two years later, he broke up with Lori because she was getting tired of the constant lack of money. But that didn't stop him from pursuing acting. He was already getting many different parts in movies and when he wasn't filming something, he was spending his money in acting classes. He was for sure committed to making it as an actor and he did it. After a lot of hard work and many small, irrelevant roles, he became one of the best actors of our time. His first leading role was on the series 21 Jump Street. From Pirates of the Caribbean to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, Edward Scissorhands, and many more, Johnny sure is a big star. So it sucks that his career and life were all put on hold because of one marriage gone wrong. Even though it seems impossible, Johnny's and Amber Heard's relationship wasn't always bad, and Johnny himself didn't deny that. In the beginning of my relationship with Miss Heard, there was, from what I recall and what I remember, she was too good to be true. She was attentive, she was loving, she was smart, she was kind, she was funny, and she was understanding. And we have many things in common, certain blues music and, well, music, literature, things of that nature. So for that year or year and a half, it was amazing, he said. His relationship with Amber started in 2012, right after Johnny separated from Vanessa Paradis after 14 years of being together. And it didn't take long for the world to see an engagement ring on Amber's hand. Everything seemed to be going well, and the ring was gorgeous. They got married in a private ceremony in 2015, and in 2016, Amber filed for divorce. So what really happened that one year that led to the end of the marriage? Depp used to work all day, and when he came home from work, Amber would sit him down, take his boots off, and give him a glass of wine. Johnny had never experienced this before, and obviously he felt great, so this became a routine for both of them. But things started going wrong when Johnny noticed how angry Amber would get if their routine ever went differently from usual. One day he came back from work and saw that Amber was busy on the phone, so he decided to do that little routine all by himself. That didn't sit right with Amber. No, 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 that's my job. That's what I do. You don't do that, I do that, Amber had said. And after Johnny noticed this, it was never the same between them anymore. Once you notice something like that, then you start to notice other little tidbits and things that come out. And then within a year or year and a half, she had become this another person almost. It didn't take long before Johnny started experiencing the same treatment he had to go through when he was a child. Only this time, it all came from Amber. It could begin with a slap. It could begin with a shove. It could begin with, you know, throwing a TV remote at my head. It could be throwing a glass of wine in my face. But all in all, it was just constant, Johnny revealed. You start to slowly realize that you are in a relationship with your mother in a sense, he said. But the fact is, some people search for weaknesses and sensitivities. And when you've told that person your life and what you've lived through, what you've been through, as happens in relationships, the more that becomes ammunition from Heard. As it is heard in this audio recording, Amber herself admits to hitting him. I said to Travis, I said, no, I said to you, hey, tell Travis what just happened. You oh, you tell told me to do it. You yeah. told me to. You said, go do that. I said, no, tell, tell him what just happened. And I lied. And that you punched me in You're the right. fucking thing. And you, you figured it out. And you said, no, fuck it. No, I didn't. What the fuck are you talking about? And I, I watched you, you lie. And then I, I didn't I punch said, you, by I, the way. You, I'm sorry that I didn't uh, you, uh, uh, hit you across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. I'm sorry I hit you like this, but I did not punch you. I did not deck you. I was hitting you. I don't know what the motion of my actual hand was, but you're fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. Depp also claims that Amber punched him when he was late and showed up drunk to her birthday. And then a day later, she put feces on his bed as revenge. She also allegedly cut his finger off. Amber, I, I lost a fucking finger, man. Come on. I had a fucking, I had a fucking... A mineral can, a jar, a can of mineral spirits thrown at my nose. You can please tell people that it was a fair fight. And, and finally, after all of that, Amber mocked Johnny, telling him that no one would ever believe him and his claims that he was a See what the jury judge thinks. Tell the world, Johnny. Tell them, Johnny Depp. I, Johnny Depp, man, I'm, I'm a victim too. Johnny. And yes. I, you know, it's a fair fight. It sees how many people believe or side with you. After the divorce, Amber wrote an article for the Washington Post about the treatment of women who spoke up against DV. Even though she never named Depp anywhere in the article, it was pretty implied. The article soon became the reason why Johnny lost all of the fame he worked hard for, and it was the reason behind why he sued her for defamation and why the trial between them started all over again. There are two sides to every story, and no one can really choose sides at this point, but what we do know is that Johnny has struggled since his childhood. 
which led him to not making the best decisions when he grew up. Depp's life has always been tragic, and hopefully once this trial is over, he can go back to his old life. Until then, don't forget to watch this other video we have for you.